Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcast. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Hello and welcome to the Voices of the Vic podcast with me, Mike Duffy. And today, as you can see, I'm joined by Tom from the Golden Pages fanzine. Tom, it's been a while since you'd last been on. But uh, how how are things with you? Are you you're all good? Yeah, all good. Yeah, voices are is struggling a bit after uh, after yesterday. But um, yeah, no, th- thanks for having me. It's uh, it's great to be back on. No, not a problem. Shame we couldn't that that voice wasn't um, lost because of a two a two one victory for Watford, and unfortunately had to settle for a one one. Um, just before we do start, I just want to say if you've tuned in and you're not seen, Ben isn't here. Uh, he's all right though. It's just he's been very very busy with his uh, daughter's birthday party yesterday and he's packing because he's going away uh, on holiday on Tuesday. So he's all right, but I'm stepping in. It's been a while since I've hosted, so uh, so bear with me, the uh, listeners and, and people that might be watching along. Uh, but as we said, we had to talk about the game yesterday. 1-1 away at the New York Stadium. A um, little bit disappointing in my eyes, but we'll get on to that. Uh, we'll start, as always, with the team news, Tom. So the team news yesterday, it was Backman, um, it was Kamara, Sema, and then Kafka, Cabaselli, and Horse. Uh, House, sorry. And in the midfield, it was Chowdhury, Kayembe, Aspria, and then Bayo and João Pedro up top. Uh, on the bench was Hamer, Gaspar, Trusta Kong, Davis, Gosling, Sierra Elsa, and Hungbo. Big one straight away for me, Tom. Was there was no Ishmael Asar? What did you What did you make of the team news initially, and then also of the news about Ishmael Asar? Yeah, it was, it was a bit disappointing to hear Saar wasn't playing. Obviously, you know, he's the, the game changer that he is. Um, yeah, initial thought was it was a bit concerning to see Capacelli at the centre of the three as opposed to Sierra Alta. Um, I don't think either of them have been pulling up trees, so to speak. Um, but yeah, I think perhaps it showed a bit of our vulnerability with Capacelli at the back. Um, he, didn't, he didn't have a great game. I'm sure we'll, we'll go on to to talk about that in a bit more detail and his involvement in the goal. But um yeah, seeing that seeing that lineup, I thought it was strong enough to to take the take all three points from that game. Um but perhaps it, it wasn't meant to be. Um I mean the, the other perhaps the other bit that was a bit concerning was was having Kamara at right wing back. Mm. Um clearly that's not something that was that we managed to address in the, the transfer window. Um, and I've, I've got a few thoughts about Ngakia as well, um, which again I'm sure we'll we'll discuss a bit later. But you, we lose a bit of balance, I think, um, with with Kamara on the right, and I, th- I think he was injured as well late on. So perhaps it, you know, there might be a a bit of an impact on of that for future games. But um, yeah, as I said, I thought, I thought it was a good enough good enough lineup to win um, to win the game, and unfortunately, it didn't didn't transpire that way. Yeah, as you say, it's so much more clearer that Kamara is a left-sided player. I think we saw him switch over to the left against Middlesbrough in the later stages, I think. And it was just so like easy to watch. And you could see how fluid he was and how confident. And he just doesn't look right at that right wing-back. And as you say, we had plenty of chances to address that in the transfer window. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case. Uh, Ngakia, whether he comes back in, we don't know. 
Uh, Rob said that he's coming back from injury. There's a chance he could play and, you know, it'd be interesting to see what he can do there. But, um, yeah, I think my main one was, I know um, it was CRL to come in out of the squad and then Cabaselli. I know he's uh, sort of had the run around a bit in the last few games, CRL to us, but I just, I'm not, I'm really not sure on Cabaselli. We, me and Ben were speaking about this in the last podcast and I don't want to slag him off too much because he's been, a guest on this podcast, he's a nice guy, but unfortunately, I just don't think he's he's the man to uh, to be in that back three. Really, I think Cathcart and uh, Horse. I think uh, House yesterday was absolutely superb. I think it's been a while since we've seen a defender that composed and calm on the ball, uh, and I, I think probably the last one for me was maybe Marco Cassetti that we saw who sort of had that presence about him that was cool, calm, and collected. Uh, so it was really good to see Courtney yesterday sort of play that play that role. Um, as you said, you know, looking at that team, we're thinking, yeah, this this should be strong enough. You know, not underestimating Rotherham one bit because they'd only lost one game previously. And uh, I was in the Weatherspoons before chatting to a couple of Rotherham fans and they said, oh, you know, we took a paste in on Tuesday. Uh, they lost to Sunderland and... I just thought, you know, we can't come here underestimating them because of, you know, the fact that they've just come up. But it wasn't a good start. I think two minutes into the clock and uh, Richard Woods, who seems to be quite free scoring at the moment for Rotherham, I think that was his fifth goal of the season already. Uh, so that that's quite remarkable for a centre-back. He, a cross was put in and I don't even think the Rotherham uh, guy that crossed it in was really expecting much. It was more a, I'll just lump this in, see what happens. Yeah. And then Cabaselli stands still. Backman fails to come off his line. And there's Richard Wood, easy as you like. One nil in two minutes. How disappointing was that, Tom? Straight away, we put ourselves on the back foot. A bit like we did against Middlesbrough as well. Yeah, as you said, it's a you know it's a second consecutive game that that's that's happened, and it, it you know you're essentially playing with a handicap of a goal, which which is never helpful. Um, in terms of the goal, uh, yeah, I've watched it back on a couple of the replays because I, I thought it'd be better to to have the benefit of, of a, a second look, shall we say? And yeah, as you said, the, the guy kind of um, lumps it in as a bit of a kind of hopeful ball into the box, and I, I've looked at it a couple of times, and it looks as though. Um, I think Cabaselli could should clearly have got rid of it, headed it out. I think it was it he could have been in a position to do so. It, it looks as though he got a shout from somewhere to to leave it or to, you know, whether it was the same sort of situation as um was it Chalibur against Bournemouth yes. a couple of years ago where, where the forward sort of shouted at leave it and um he kind of crept it. It looked like that because Cathcart couldn't have shouted because he, he didn't have enough time to come across. Um so I, I think that's that's what happened there. Um, I mean, in terms of the cross itself, it, I'm a little bit critical of Backman here as well. Um, it's, it's a common problem. I think you call it a problem in terms of, of his, his style of play. He's never been one to command the box. I mean, shot stopping wise, he's been incredible this year. Like um, unbelievable, as good as we could have hoped for. But what you're losing with Backman is a bit of distribution, which he's improved over the last... So two or three games, I think. Um, but you've also got that that uh, box presence. He should have come out for that. He should have shouted his, you know, bellowed his name and, and grabbed that up for me, I think. You know, it was just outside the, the, the six-yard box. And, yeah, he, he's got to take that. He shouldn't be relying on the centre-backs to, to clear that. And, yeah, as I said, I think it was a, a miscommunication in, in, on sort of Capacelli's part. I, I don't think he had a great game anyway. But, um, yeah, you know, you go... You go one nil down after a couple of minutes, and a place like Rotherham, you, 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 the, the onus is on Watford to to break them down, and you know it's it's going to be a hard game, and, and that's exactly what exactly what happens. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, absolutely, completely agree. And uh, like you said, you know, if if he has heard a shout, we we learnt our lesson with that last season when we played Leicester. I think Truce to Kong ducked, and uh, Madison was behind him, and he ended up scoring. I don't care if you keep a shouting there. If you think you're going to get it, just get it. And if Backman has shouted for that, why is he still on his line? As you said, you know, absolutely superb shot, shot, uh, shot stopper. And he's, you know, really cemented his place as number one. He'd come back in after losing his position last year and he's had a brilliant start to the season. But if he has called for that, then he needs to be coming off his line and not rooted to the spot. Cabas should be dealing with that 
regardless for me, even if even if he has heard a shout, you just cannot sort of rely on people be, behind you, especially if if um, if Batman was on his line. So, yeah, really poor to go 1-0 down, a bit like we did early doors against Middlesbrough, as I say. And, um, yeah, you mentioned there, going to a place like Rotherham, I don't think they've lost at home yet because that defeat that come was away at Sunderland. So, you know yeah. what you're going to get? It's a tight little stadium, very nice stadium, but tight, sort of close to the action. Uh, and, and the you know, it can be a bit of a raucous atmosphere in there at times as well. So, to already, as you say, go 1-0 down is really disappointing. And to be honest, Tom, I don't think we reacted at all. That first 20 minutes for me was probably the worst 20 minutes I've seen, probably going back to last season when we were absolutely awful. But for you, it, was it the same for you? That 20 minutes was horrendous. Yeah, there was just no reaction. Um, it was almost as though, you know, we, we started the game at, at half past half past three when... Uh, when Bio scored, it was yeah. I just expected a reaction. There was no control of the game. Uh, we, we were seconds to first and second balls for that first twenty minutes. Um, that that was that was very disappointing. And I think Rob Edwards um, spoke after the game. He was he was quite animated in his uh, upset about about how we how we played. And you just you can't you've got to go into each game with your foot on the gas from the word go and that's two games where we've been punished that you know we probably lost points as a result of that um versus you know had we not conceded then um yeah just very dis- hopefully it's something that they're, that they're looking at um in training this week because i think there's a there's a week until the, the reading game on saturday so um yeah things to learn um it, it was good to see that we we did we did find that equalizer within half an hour and it wasn't Wait until the, um, the 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 final knock into the game, and I, I, yeah, I thought after after that, after we scored the goal, um, that was a real a real turning point. Um, yeah, and the, the goal itself um, was 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 brilliant. I thought. And what, one thing I think about the um, the, the thing with Semmer being on the left is that you've got going forwards, you've got his ability to cross the ball, and he takes on a player. And I don't, I don't think there's another player in the, in the squad at the moment that's that's capable of putting in crosses like he does. So that's a, something to think about, I guess, with Kamara being on the right. Is if, if Kamara is on the left, you've got to take Ken out So and you'll lose a bit of something there. So, um, yeah, some, something to kind of think about. But, um, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as you say, 33 minutes on the clock, Semmer gets down that left-hand side, crosses it beautifully. And my word, what a finish. Vacuum bio. To think it wasn't long ago when he was coming on and he had these chances and he was missing them and there were even people comparing him to Andre Gray and which I think is highly disrespectful and they they just writ him off straight away. They they were saying this guy's another Mogi Bayat client. He's no good, but two goals in two games for him and surely confidence is going to lift off from here because. My word, what a finish. I thought, I'll be honest, when that ball come in and when he hit it first time, I thought he skied this air. But what a goal it was, wasn't it, Tom? Oh, it's brilliant. Um, technically excellent. Um, from the, the cross in was, was was brilliant. Exactly where you'd want it to go uh, from the byline from Semmer. Um, and then, yeah, again, I've watched that, that goal back a couple of times. I thought it was at the opposite end, wasn't it? So it was mm. a little bit difficult to see at the, at the time. But you had a defender coming out attacking the ball and he's just kept his eye on it from from the start made be like technically brilliant contact on it and he's you know he's hit it sort of quite high and powerful absolutely superb and i think you know the, the, his goal against middlesbrough would likely have given him confidence i'm not sure whether he would have finished to quite the same uh aplomb um had he not scored against middlesbrough but mm. yeah it's a very very technically good finish and i mean with with, with bio and a lot of the players, you know, so it's a brand new system. He's coming into a new club, coming from abroad. I know he's played at Celtic um, in the past, but mm. championship football is, is unlike any other football in the world, I think. So it's a, a very specific way of playing and you've got challenges that, that you don't find in many leagues. So, uh, I mean, I, I like to give the sides about 10 games to to really form an opinion. So I, I didn't like him being, uh, or any of them kind of being written off Immediately, you need you need to give him a, a run of games and to see what how they get on. I mean, you know, he, he could be 
the next kind of Andre Gray or an iteration of that. But you've got to judge him over a longer period of time. And, you know, he's come up with two key goals in two in two games and hopefully it, it, it'll build his confidence and, and he can really kick on because he's got some he's got some challenges, uh, some uh, some challenges to that position once everyone's fit. Um, it's not going to be. He's not going to be able to walk into into the um, starting eleven. No, and it, it would have been interesting as well yesterday. If Saar was fit, would Bio still started? Because obviously Bio won us a match, and he deserves to be rewarded for that from the Middlesbrough game. But at the end of the day, it's Ismail Saar, so it would have been interesting to see whether he would have started or not. But I think I was saying on the last podcast, I think with a player like that, I can definitely see a player in there. I really can. Uh, and like you said, we're still early into the regime. He's still learning a new, um, you know, system. He's come over to English football, which is the championship. I would say is probably the most physical league uh, in the, you know, the whole the whole of England. So he's completely had to change the the style of play. But I think there's a player in there, and I think these two goals will help him. I think he's a confidence player. So two goals in two games, and you, as you say, they weren't like consolation goals or. The, the fifth in a six in a win or whatever they were key goals to to win us points so hopefully fingers crossed that you know he he will chip in with the with the odd goal there and then I mean we'll talk about it in a little bit but he did have another chance to put us ahead but that goal wasn't far from uh, from half time so to go in uh, one one at half time did you feel a little bit more comfortable considering what we had to endure in that first twenty minutes did you think okay one one at half time you know we we got the last goal we're shooting towards the away fans. Was you feeling a bit more confident going into the second half, Tom? Yeah, I, I think we, we grew into it. And as I said earlier, you know, we, the, the point that we got the goal, I thought we were on the up. And this is a bit more of the Watford that we've come to hope for in the, in the last few weeks. Um, it felt like it was kind of the game was restarting at half time because yeah. um, of the, the way that it, it started, um, you know, with that, um, with that one goal disadvantage that we had. As you said, you know, shooting towards the the home fans. I, I really like. That's the first time I've been to Rotherham's ground, new grounds, and uh, I really liked it. Was quite steep, yeah, so it felt it was... everyone was very close to it. And yeah, I don't think there was a bad a bad seat in the house. So we got a yeah. I felt felt much more uh, positive about the um, coming out after the break. And I thought, you know, Rob would, would get into them at half time and um, you know make sure they didn't start the second half like they did the first. Um, and I thought, yeah, second half we were pretty dominant um although lacked a bit of a cutting edge mm. at times um but yeah it's, it's 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 frustrating when you've got to come from a goal down to just to get on level terms but uh yeah absolutely and you know second half it was clear that robert sort of said right you know we need to change what we're doing because what we was doing in the first half just did not work at all so you know we saw a couple of chances i think rotherham had a chance from distance I thought Batman did very well to save it, actually. Again, highlighting his qualities as a shot stopper, as you mentioned previously, Tom. Uh, it sort of, it, it must have moved in the air, swerved a bit from long distance, and he got down and, and parried it. But I thought that was a, a decent enough save because team like Rotherham, no disrespect to them, but they're, they're going to take any chance that they could. You, you look back to the Preston game and most of their shots felt like they were long distance shots. And they obviously thought, well, if we fancy it, why not have a go? And, you know, teams like that sometimes they'll feed off those sort of scraps. So, fair play to uh, to Backman to get down low from that save from Barlazer. Um There was a penalty shout in the second half. I think it was João Pedro uh, that that was sort of bundled down. Uh, I, I walked past you. You actually had a good seat. I, I walked past you when we went into the stadium. From your point of view, did, did you look at that and think, "How's he not given that?" Or do you think it was a bit soft? I, I, I didn't think there was much in it, to be honest. Um, after the, the QPR, was it the QPR game where, um, yeah, I think Kamara got taken down um, in injury time or very late on in that game. And I thought that was a far more convincing penalty than the, the Chao Pedro one. Um, I think, I don't know whether it's his, whether he's got a reputation, but um, yeah, I, I didn't think there was much in it. It could have been given, but I wasn't, wasn't furious that it wasn't. Um, yeah, sometimes you're going to get them, sometimes you're not really. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, you know, I don't, I don't, a lot of people will probably slate the referee, but I thought we were quite fortunate at times yesterday. I think there was a foul given when Rotherham broke in the second half and I think they were pretty much through. 
and we got a foul and I thought, no way is that a foul, but you take them, don't you? So, yeah, I think one of the, again, I'll probably get slated for this, but one of the more sort of equally balanced refereeing performances I think I've seen so far this season uh, from uh, from Lee Doughty. But you mentioned earlier, Tom, about Ngakia and you've got a, a, a few words on, on what you think of him. 64 minutes in, we were forced into that first change and it was Kamara that come off and Gaspar come on. Uh, I'm, I'm still not convinced on Gaspar. He got forward a little bit more yesterday uh, than, than I've sort of seen him do in previous games, but still not convinced he's the answer to our prayers at right wing back. Um, with, with Kamara coming off, it may be a precaution, it may be a long-term thing. Do you, if once Ngaki is fit, do you think he has to be starting that, in that position? I think this is a role, as soon as Rob Edwards came in, I thought this is a role right wing back is perfectly suited to Jeremy and Gakia. He's he perhaps been a little bit unfortunate in the past with his opportunities, lack of opportunities that he's had under previous managers. He's still young, he's got a lot to learn, but I thought it's, it's exactly the player he is. It's um, busting up and down, up and down the wings. He's got a hell of an engine on him. Um, but perhaps, he, you know, he's... His crossing isn't necessarily the strongest point of his, his game, but something that he could perhaps learn. Um, but I'm, I'm just not sure where he sits in Rob Edwards' thought process. I know he's, he's injured at the moment, but I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but I think he was on the bench for um, a couple of games earlier on in the season when Kamara was being played on the right. I'm not entirely sure if that's um, if that's the case. But, um, yeah, it's I just don't think he's fancied by Rob Edwards for whatever reason. It may be... It, it, I don't know, it might be what he's doing in training or I, I really don't know, but I really hope that he's given a chance there and he can thrive and impress, you know, he's given the opportunity to impress Rob Edwards because he's right-footed. As I said, he's got an engine on him and he's young. So I, I think he could he could be the, um, uh, what's the, the fella that, is it Kane Wilson? The, yeah. um, the guy that was in that position for Forest Green last year. I think he's physically similar to him. Um, and yeah, I just can't, I can't see a future playing a, a left left footed player on the right. And as you said, Gaspar is he's not a a bustling winger. Um, it, he's a very good. He does. He just reminds me of Marco Cassetti. And you wouldn't dream of playing Marco Cassetti right wing back because he just didn't have the legs. Mm-hmm. I think in a four, um, Gaspar could could be good. But the, the left and right wing back positions playing in this system are the two most important positions on the pitch, perhaps more so than the strikers, because of everything comes from them. All the creativity um, and, and a lot of the sort of, I mean, three at the back turns to five at the back if you're under pressure, mm. but also it adds to midfielders and, you know, um, go, when, when you're going forward. So I, I really hope he's he's given a chance um, at Ngakia um, for, for the future. Yeah. Yeah, and you you are right. He was on the bench for the Sheffield United game, Burnley and Birmingham game. Uh, and then he picked up a knock in training, so he's been injured ever since. But uh, I, I must admit and hold my hands up here, I, a couple of podcasts ago, I can't remember when it was, but I sort of said I don't know if Ngakia would, would suit a, a right wing-back role. But now the transfer window's closed. I, I said we should give him a go, absolutely. But now the transfer window's closed, surely that points to him taking that spot because we can't go forwards playing gas um sorry uh Kamara at right wing back because he just doesn't suit it. He still tries to get forward a couple of times yesterday he made a few bursting runs trying to get forward and trying to create attacks but he just looks awkward on that side. It's almost as if he he, he doesn't like to or he's not capable of putting in a first time cross or or trying to sort of make play work. He has to sort of switch it onto his left side. So yeah, um, he should definitely be out on the left, one hundred percent. As you say, that does where does that leave Ken? As as we know, Ken is a a good crosser of the ball and and the work rate is is very good in the championship. So it will be interesting to see. But um, I, I must admit, I do think that Ngakia could be the guy. You know, we were talking about when he first joined under Ivic, his stats were incredible on paper. He was uh, highest blocks, highest interceptions, and you know, could we see that possibility of him? sort of being moulded into that Kane Wilson role and someone suggested Hungbo down there in the comments. I don't know whether I'd go with Hungbo. Hungbo attacking wise he's very good. You know, we mm. saw what he could do at Ross County last season, but has he got the defensive capabilities? Often you see wing backs or people that try and play wing back 
get it so wrong. They might be brilliant going forward, but defensively, you have to be just as good. So I don't know if I'd agree with uh, with Hungbo there, but absolutely, I think Jeremy and Gakia um, needs to be given a chance. And hopefully, when he's back from this injury, we, we will see him at right wing back. But you know, with with Gaspar as well. Sorry to interrupt you, Mike. Yeah, I th- I thought he's yeah he's good good at uh, uh, right back in a four, but I thought he would come in as a uh, a right centre back. Um, in, in that system, I thought it was um, where Cathcart's playing at the moment because he's comfortable on the ball. You can see technically he's very good, um, uh, you know, with the, the strength of perhaps Sierra Alto at the back, uh, sorry, in the middle of the, the three, and, uh, and Courtney Hauser at left centre back. I, I thought that's that's a role that's sort of not made for him, but he, he might excel in, um, in that system. No, completely agree. And, you know, we, we know he's got the pedigree, you know, he was but Villarreal for how long and captain there. So, you know, he, he's a good player. And I just think, as we've spoke about, he doesn't have the legs to be getting up and down and up and down and, you know, attacking. And then if they break, he needs to be sprinting back. Rob said that a couple of times in uh, in interviews and he, he hasn't got the legs. So I, I think if we were to see a better position for him, then absolutely uh, in that back three, as one of the centre backs, I could definitely see him there. And as Adam Tomlinson rightly said, there we may as well give Ngaki a chance rather than him sitting on the bench and playing a p- player out of position, really, uh, which is what we're doing with Kamara at the moment because we're not getting the best out of him. And let's not forget, he won Player of the Season last year. So um, another man that we saw uh, not make his debut because he made his debut against Birmingham City, but we saw more of him. Sixty-seven minutes on the clock. Davies come on for a spree. Firstly, I just want to talk about a spree. I think it's incredible that he's hit the ground running. I said on one of the first podcasts of the season that I, don't, I didn't think he was going to play much this season. I thought he's going to be a bit part player. He's going to come on sort of last 20, last 30, unlock defences, tired legs, have someone running at him, uh, have him running at tired legs, sorry. But he's been a mainstay in the team and a fair play to him. He's hit the ground running in, in the English game. I think yesterday maybe highlighted he's still got a fair bit to go in his development. I think his shooting isn't where he perhaps wants it to be. He got himself into a good position a couple of times and we know what he's like with his three balls, finding pockets of space. But he, he had a couple of chances yesterday, which if he'd sort of rounded his game off a little bit more, he perhaps would have finished. But what did you make of the Spreer and what have you made of him so far, Tom? Oh, I, I think it's, it's incredible it, the, the way that he's come coming to this side. He's he's 18 years old, which you know coming into perhaps you know demanding a, a starting eleven position in any you know championship side would be is impressive. But he's come from Colombia, no experience of the English league. He's done speak the language. I, I just think he's, he's incredible, an absolutely incredible um, person to to adapt to that and. It's, Technically, again, he's very skillful. He's got superb touch on him, and he's very effective already. And we're we're at the beginning of September. He's I think he's got the he's got the potential to surpass Richarlison and, and Gio Pedro um, if he continues his um, his development and, and progress. So far, um, he's another one. He's, he's a joy to watch, and he's got such a slight frame. Mm-hmm. You think, oh god, he's, he's not. He's going to get knocked off the ball every time. But he's quite strong. He's uh, he's got a, a low centre of gravity and, yeah, massive asset to us. And I, I hope that he um, he continues to grow and he'll become more important as the season goes on, I'm sure. You know, that role um, behind the strikers in that kind of, I guess it's a sort of deep number 10, uh, high number 8 role. Um, it, um, you know, it, it'll, I'm sure he'll come in and out of the, of, the, of the team as the season goes on and we have certain players fit and unfit. But, yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with him so far. Yeah, and then the the man to come on and replace him, Keenan Davies. I mean, we know what to expect from him because of how he played at Nottingham Forest last season on loan. Uh, you know, he, he's got a reputation of being big and strong player and chipping with a few goals. And a couple of people said he, he not only will he chip in with a few goals himself, but he'll also create goals for other people. And I think we saw that yesterday. That straight away. I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure his first involvement, we, we pretty much almost nearly scored and he almost got himself on the score sheet and it's just a joy to watch. He's going to be some player in this team, isn't he, Tom? Yeah, I do. he's another one that's he's got a, a role perfectly suited to his skill set. His, his hold-up play when he came on there 
was was unbelievable. The ball was sticking. I've not seen a, a Watford player like um, who's been able to hold up the ball like that for for years. I mean, possibly kind of Darius Henderson era. Yeah. Um, he was holding off defenders, and that's going to help with the pace of Saar when he comes back and Pedro. He, he's going to occupy defenders, and he's, he's going to create so many opportunities. Let alone his, um, you know, his, his abilities to to finish that that we saw at Forest um, in spells last year. If he can um, discover his, we discover his Forest form. I think we've got a hell of a player there, and I, you know, I hope that um, you know there's a possibility to to sign him permanently if if that option does come in. And you know, he's a local lad as well. I, I love to see. Um, you know, I think he's from Stevenage, I think. Um, yeah, he is, yeah. It, it's, it's another great thing, a real sort of side point, I guess. But, you know, he's probably familiar with the area. It's a bit more comfortable. So that might have eased his settling in. But I, I felt sorry for him. Not, not. Um, I think he was ill for the last couple of games. Um, so I, I, I felt sorry for him sort of having to sit, sit um, watching on frustrated. But, yeah, give him a bit more match, uh, match fitness. And um, we've got a real player there. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as you say, the fact that he's been injured and then he's been ill, yet he's still come on and looked this good. Like you mentioned earlier, we've got a week now until the next game. And um, it's it's going to be needed. You know, this Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday is relentless, uh, as as we all know in the Championship. But he he's going to, well, him and a load of others are going to benefit from that break. So hopefully he, he goes straight into the squad against Reading and uh, and he can hit the ground running. But that chance I mentioned, you know, we, we ended up hitting the post. It was Bio, I think, João Pedro crossed the ball and Bio and Gaspar went for the same ball and, um, and hit the post in the end. For me, I don't even think it needed that much power. It just needed more direction. You must have mm. had a brilliant view of that, sat right behind the goal. But did you think that was in some? Oh yeah, I did. I really did. I was I was kind of up, jumping up and down when the ball got played in. I think he had a uh, Bayer had a similar um, attempt. I don't know whether it was against Middlesbrough or the game, perhaps QPR or something before that. But a similar ball came in, and as you said, he just needed to kind of guide it in, and he, he sort of nicked off his head, and obviously he didn't didn't get enough contact on it, and it's hit the post. But you know that could have been the the game, but should have been the game winner. I, I think. Um, yeah, I was, I was just very frustrated that that, that one didn't go in. Um, but yeah, hopefully he's, he's learned from that. And, um, you know, next time that happens, he'll be finishing those. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's sort of the, the frustration I think people are having with Bio. You know, he'll go and score that absolutely, you know, beaut of a goal in the first half. And then all he has to do is get some form of direction on the header and, and it's in and it's 2-1 and... You know, we we probably see the rest of the game out. Maybe go and get another one. You know, Davis uh, had, a, had a chance sort of not long after where he'd muscled his way out of uh, danger, and then he he managed to have a shot, but it was blocked at the near post, and the corners kept coming. And I think it just sort of summed up our our, our game. Really, we we couldn't really finish those chances that we were carving out. And at the end of the day, it was a, another draw away from home. Uh, still not one away from home, but that old cliche in football, win your home games and draw your away ones. If you average two points every game, then, you know, you, you're going to end up up there and, and, and basically getting promoted. So are you are you too concerned at the moment, Sam, that we seem to be drawing? We can't seem to do it on the road, sort of. I don't want to compare him to this, but we, we sort of felt like that under Rivich. We, we just couldn't do it away from home. Are you concerned at all or do you think, you know, we're still early days. Give it time. Technically, we haven't lost away, and we're still picking up points on the road, which is important. Which which side of the fence are you on? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's important to to kind of understand a bit of the context. Really, you know, you could say we've not won away from home, or we've not lost equally. So, and as you said, the the way to promotion is to win your home games and at least take a point from from your away games. It's, it's frustrating because we, we've played winnable games. Um, I, I felt we were, you know, I don't think many people would have been uh, too shocked if we would have um, if we'd have picked up three points having watched that game. Um, but it's all going to take time. You know, we've had a huge change, had a, a change of, of head coach, change of culture, system, style, mentality. 
you know, you don't win the you don't win the league in August or September. You need to get that momentum as the you know as the year turns. Um, you know, we've also got the World Cup break as well, which is going to be a big um, impact in how our season goes on. So. I think we just need to, we've got a lot of important players coming back. You know, Luz has not kicked a ball yet. Uh, Courtney Hawes is played his first 90. Davis and Gakia, as I said, you know, they're all, they're all important players in this system. Um, so I think to be in the position that we are three points off from the top spot, I think, mm-hmm. at this stage is, is brilliant. Um, I, I think we, we once players become, um, once we get, find a starting 11 and, um players become more comfortable in the system what's demanded from them we're going to be flying because we've got we've definitely got one of the best squads if not the best squad in the division we've got such depth um, and you know an injury to Saar today and it's not really been too much of an impact in terms of the players that can come in to replace him you know Keenan Davis and um, and um, Bio up front you know we've got two, two goals in two games from Bio. I, I, I'm very positive still. Um, there's a long way to go. It's a long old season. And as you as you said earlier, you know, it's been so relentless the last mm-hmm. few weeks, two games a week. Um, and it's been a real test. And, and to be in the position that we're that we're at is is great. The only frustrating thing I think is the the absence of that bringing in that, that right wing back. I thought that was a as uh, most people have said, mm-hmm. was just something that we would die, you know, really in need of, um, if particularly if Ngaki is not fancied. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a journey, isn't it? We've got to enjoy the ride. There's going to be highs, there's going to be lows. You know, a lot of people have said they'd be happy for us to st- stick in the championship for a couple of years. Um, I, I'm not of that opinion. I think we need to get up as soon as we can. But it's, um, I think as someone tweeted, um, it might have been from an Everton account or something. Uh, it's about the journey, not the destination. So, um yeah, very positive moving forwards. Yeah, absolutely. And it's nice to hear some positivity. I mean, you, you log into Twitter nowadays and my word, it's just it's just a horrible, toxic place on there. I mean, as we we're walking out the ground yesterday, um, I, I heard some lads behind me saying that effectively we were sleepwalking into League One. Uh, and I thought, you know, I just thought, right, I just need to get myself on the train and get home. Because, like... As you say, we, we've not, we've, we've, however many games in to a new manager, a new regime, these are the same people that wanted us to stick with an English coach. They want us to change the direction on how we approach things, how we play football. It's Rob Edwards was never going to come in and change it straight away. And then, you know, straight away, we're playing fantastic football, top of the league by five points clear and all that. That was never going to happen. The fact we've lost one game. And we're sitting here and we've, we've, we'll be honest, you know, we, we're eight games in. We've not yet had a performance where we've been like, wow, that was incredible. Yet, we've still got 13 points on the board. As you rightly said, Tom, we're three points beyond Norwich who are top. We're in the playoffs as it stands. That's a good return for me. Eight games, 13 points. I'll take that considering we've been at large. We've been pretty rubbish. So, I'll take that and I'm happy... To, to wait for the, the better performances to come. I think we said, I said the other day, the transfer window's closed now until January. So we we can now start, Rob can start doing what he wants. Well, not doing what he wants, but he can start sort of moulding his team how he wants. He knows who he's got. He's not yeah. in the back of his head thinking, right, I'll play him here, but he might be leaving. So his head might be turned. You know, there, there's positive signs to come. Uh, and... Uh, you know, you, like you said there, you, you're not of the opinion that we, we should be, well, we should be sticking around in the championship for a couple of seasons. Uh, I understand where people are coming from when they say that, but it's a very risky game to play. You've seen it before. Teams come down from the Prem, stay in the championship for two, three seasons, and, uh, and, and it gets harder and harder each year to get out of. I think Aston Villa is the only one I can think of where they come down, didn't go back up at the first time of asking, and in the season after, luckily for them, they got up by the playoffs and they, they've they've been in the Prem since. So, you know, that's a very rare sort of instance of that happening. Uh, I know Bournemouth did it as well, come down, didn't go back up and then went up the season after. So, it's, it's a very risky game to play, absolutely. But another point on the road, uh, trying to keep the positivity going, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. It could be worse, could be sitting rock bottom of the league. 
you'd think we were with some of the stuff that people have been saying on Twitter. But um, I, I think you've, you, you're absolutely spot on there, Tom. And uh, we've, we've got a week now till the next game against Reading. So, fingers crossed we can get some good preparation in. People that have had little knocks and niggles can sort of rest up a little bit. Reading are playing as we speak. So, we get one more day's preparation than them or one day more rest than them, however it works. So let's take whatever we can and, you know, we know it'll be a tough game and uh, we, we, we just got to keep on going. That, that, that's that's all we can do and uh, enjoy the roller coaster that is the championship. But I think that about wraps it up for today. So, Tom, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, you, your voice has managed to hold out. I know you, it's, <laughs> it's a bit hoarse from yesterday. As as we were saying before we come on air, I've this is uh, the most I've been to football in a while and every time I come back and my throat's in bits. So thanks very much for, for coming on again. It's been great to chat and uh, I'm sure we'll speak again at some stage this season. But uh, yes, yeah, take thanks for having me. No, not a problem. And thanks for all those that have listened. Uh, we really do appreciate it. You know, uh, apologies if uh, it's been a bit rusty. As I say, I've not hosted since two seasons ago. So it's uh, it, it's it's been a... Uh, been nerve-wracking for me throughout, but thanks for sticking with us and watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to give it a like. Hit subscribe as well. We're trying to reach that 300 subscribers mark by Christmas. It's very doable. We're, we're a couple of, um, I think we're like 80 or something off. So, yeah, uh, three months ago. So, if you can subscribe to us, that'd be brilliant. And uh, let us know your thoughts as well in the comments section. But until next time, stay safe and come on, you ones. Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello, Saver. Whether you're saving for that trip to the tropics or saving for an emergency, now is the time to take advantage of Wells Fargo's savings options. Wells Fargo offers savings accounts that can help you save towards your goals. So, what are you saving for? Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com slash save to open a savings account today. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC.